one students for the final time this year. This is your homework guide for the homework. This is 812. The last homework assignment, this is a record as far as how far I've ever gotten in this curriculum for a given school year. Although, to be fair, the last three years have been rocked by ridiculousness. So let's jump right into it. 817, we're going to practice exactly what we did today. So I'm going to go real fast because I want to get all these problems done in 15 minutes. So make a generic rectangle. Go ahead and put your x squared and your negative 12 in there. The diamond problem comes next. We have to think about two numbers that add to be negative 4x and multiply to be negative 12x squared, which is what the diagonal multiplies to be. So we have to think about numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 4. If they exist, it's also possible that they don't. Negative 12, you can do 1 and 12. That's out. You can do 2 and 6. I think that might be it because one of them has to be negative. So if I think we do negative 6x and positive 2x, that does the trick. Those two numbers multiply to 12 and add to negative 4. The 6 must be negative, though. Negative 6x and 2x. Now all we got to do is look at the rows and columns and factor this thing out. x squared and 6x will have an x involved. 2 and 2x and 12 will have a 2 involved. On the rows, x squared plus 2x have, it. Now, again, an x involved. And negative 6x and negative 12 both have a negative 6 involved. So I believe the factored version is x plus 2 times x minus 6. Second verse, same as the first. Go ahead and set your box up like this. This one's going to be actually an interesting answer. I know what the answer to this one is just by looking at it, because it shows up all the time in Algebra 2. 4x squared and 1. Again, if you make your diamond problem, we want to think about numbers that are going to add to be 4x and multiply to be 4x squared. Now, if you think about factors of 4, there's only a handful of them, 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. And 2 and 2 is the one we want. 2x and 2x. They both multiply to 4x squared and add to 4x. So we put a 2x there and a 2x there, bada bing, bada boom, bada bam. What's interesting is if you factor it, you get 2x squared here, and then 1 and 2x don't have anything in common, so it's just 1. If you look at the row, the same thing happens. 4x squared and 2x both have 2x, and these guys, again, have 1. And so the factors are actually the same thing, 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. Or if you want to be really cool, 2x plus 1 squared. This is what's known in the business as a perfect square trinomial. Next question. 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. Again, let's make ourselves a little box here. We're going to have 2x squared down there. We want minus 5 up there. We want our diamond problem all set up also to help us think about what we need. We need two numbers that uh, add to negative 9x and multiply to be uh, negative 10x squared. Going fast. Don't expect you to be on this pace right now, but I'm just giving you something to work on from this. Numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 9. Well, 1 and 9 looks like it might do the trick, but I don't think it's going to work quite well. 2 and 5, maybe? No, that's not going to work. I think this, might, well, this one might not be possible. Let me think about it for a little bit longer. I don't think it's going to work. Adds to negative 9, multiplies to negative 10. I don't think there's anything that works here. I think this one might be not possible. What? What is it? Oh, I'm thinking of multiply. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. You're right, 1 and 10. Those numbers multiply to 10. I was getting, I got confuzzled in my brain. 1 and 10 works really well here. Because we want negative 10 and 1x. That way we add to negative 9. I was thinking about, I had made a mistake in multiplication land. OK, negative 10x. I suspect one of these will not be possible. I'm just guessing. I haven't done this yet. So you're seeing right now my live struggle. 2x and 10x squared, both divided by 2x. X and negative 5 don't have anything in common. 2x squared and x both divide by x. And negative 10x and negative 5 both divide by negative 5. And so I believe the factored version of this is 2x plus 1 times x minus 5. And question C. Again, I'm suspect, I'm suspicious that one of these might not work. So this one will probably be the one. But let's find out. It might. 3x squared, negative 8. We need two numbers that multiply to negative, ooh. That's a cool pen. I know. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 24x squared. And they have to add to 10x. Actually, this, this does work. What multiplies to negative 24 and adds to 10? So let's think about things that multiply to 24. We need things, numbers that are 10 apart. Uh, 2 and 12 will work really nicely here. We could do a positive 12x and a negative 2x. Those two numbers multiply to negative 24 but add to positive 10. That's the trick, 12x, negative 2x. So looking at the factoring, we have 3x in this row. We have mm, negative 2 
in that row, both negative numbers. In the bottom row, 3x squared and 2x have an x in common, and uh, 12x and negative 8 have a 4 in common. So we're going to have uh, x plus 4 and 3x minus 2. There we go. Okay, cool. Let's move on to something different. For each of the rule, each rule represented below state the x and y intercepts if possible. Oh, can we get an easier problem, please? X intercepts would be x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. It's just where the graph crosses the x axis. It's in the name, x intercept. Yeah. Y intercept, <laughs> negative 3. So easy. So easy. Math is hard, they say. <laughs> y intercept. Okay, what about this one? There is, only, there is no y intercept as far as I know. Can't, I don't see one. But as far as x-intercepts go, there's totally 1 right there at x equals 2. Looking at C, oh no, a table. I'm going to go home and cry. No. No, you shouldn't do that. I had a chemistry teacher in high school that would say that all the time. Now, this is kind of interesting there. There's two, uh, let's see, are those x or y-intercepts? Hmm. Got to think about it. Those are going to be x-intercepts because that's where y is equal to 0. Those points are on the x-axis. So x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. Is this, the, is this the table for the graph up above? I think it is. No, it's not. It's close. What's that? Oh, my gosh, there's another one. Whoa. No, nope. whoa, hold up. There it is. x equals 1. And there is one y-intercept, which is typical, 0, 2. If there was more than one y-intercept, it wouldn't be a function. And on question D, ooh, interesting. This is probably the trickiest of these problems. If we want to find x-intercepts, that happens when y is equal to 0. And if we want to find a y-intercept, that happens when x is equal to 0. We have to use this mathematical fact to actually solve this problem for both cases. It's actually really simple. For example, if you plug 0 in for y, what you get is 5x minus 0 equals 40. In other words, 5x equals 40, which if you divide the 5 on both sides, means x happens at x equals 8. And the y-intercept is the exact same case. All you got to do is make the x equal to 0, which would give you this equation, 0 minus 2y equals 40, or negative 2y equals 40, which if you divide the negative 2 over, gives you y equals negative 20. Easy. We got two sequences down below. We're going to find the uh, equations for those right now. This first one, arithmetic or geometric? You can think about that for a minute. It's got to be geometric. Look at the numbers, 2, 4, and then 8. It's going down by 1 half each time. That's what's going on. If you didn't recognize that right away, what you could do is you could just divide any one of these numbers by the previous one. Do 1 fourth divided by 1 half, which is kind of weird, but it is 1 half. That's the multiplier. But see, the multiplier on its own is enough. We need to find the starting value also. So you can go back in time one step by multiplying by 2, which would take you to 1. And so a is equal to 1 in this problem. And so the equation is going to be y equals 1 times 1 half to the x power, or more simply, just 1 half to the x, since the 1 doesn't do diddly squat in there. Of course, if you want to skip this whole back in time one step nonsense, you can hack it a little bit and just say it's one half times one half to the x minus first power. This is called first term form. We glossed over it in one homework problem a while ago. It's called that because the one half is the first term. Let's look at the next one. Arithmetic or geometric? That's kind of the question you got to ask yourself at the top of this problem. They're going down by two each time, if you see that for a little bit. Minus two, minus two. So the slope in this case is negative 2, if you want to think about it like an mx plus b. Arithmetic, for sure. So if we're going to write this as an equation, well, we know that y is equal to negative 2 times x plus whatever the zeroth term is. To find that, we've got to go back in time one step and add 2 and land at negative 5.5, which is what the starting value is. Or if you don't like that going back in time one step problem, you can do the exact same thing, but make it negative 2 times x minus 1, and then add on the first term, negative 7.5. These are the same exact equation, just one is a little easier to write, I think. This one, I think, is easier to write because it's got the negative 7.5 right in it, but 
You can do whichever you want. Go ahead and turn the page. Where are we time-wise? Am I good? I'm going to keep going. Who knows? The value of bullseye stock has decreased by 8%. Boom, right there. Right away, I'm going to write um, that the multiplier in this problem is going to be 0 0.92. Decreasing by 8% means you are keeping 92%. That is the first hurdle we have to jump in this problem. In 2010, if the stock was worth 50 bucks, let's say that's A, that's a starting point. And 2010, we're going to make a note that's when x equals 0. Because we are asked how much it's worth in 2015. If 2010 is year 0, 2015 is year 5. We're doing the math there. So our equation is going to be something like this. Y equals 50 times 0.92 to the x power. Of course, we're going to plug in 5 for this. So we need to go on a calculator really fast and do 50 times 0.92 to the fifth power. And I set up calculator cam, but I didn't put a calculator there at all. Uh, I don't have anyone anywhere near me. I don't want to stop the video. So I'll leave it for you guys at home to calculate that answer. Next question. You're, oh, come on. Stop. Like that's, that's not even a challenge. Next question. We're already on the next thing. Oh, look at this. Solving systems of equations. I think you already did a checkpoint quiz over already. This first one is a substitution system. We'll go ahead and replace the y with 2x minus 3 in the bottom equation. Then we'll just do the math and simplify it. x plus 2x gives us 3x minus 3 equals 15. We'll add the 3 to both sides and get 3x equals 18. We'll divide the 3 on both sides and get x equals 6. That's not, of course, the answer. That's only part of the answer. We need to figure out what y is also. But we do know that x plus y is 15. So that means that 6 plus y is 15. That means that y's got to be 9. And before we leave the problem, we can spot check it. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. Over on question B, this is more of an elimination system, but it's also got some tricks thrown your way. X's are already stacked up on the left side correctly together. But the y's are kind of not. In fact, honestly, I withdraw immediately. I'm going to solve this by substitution. Because if 3x equals y minus 2, then y is equal to 3x plus 2, if you add 2 to both sides in that equation. And I think this is an easier way to solve this particular problem. This means that I can replace y in the second equation. 6x equals 4 minus 2 times 3x plus 2. Just replacing the y with 3x plus 2. We have to distribute that 2 to get to the next step. 6x equals 4 minus 6x minus 4. This is the kind of question that you might think has no solution, but it totally does. If you add the 6x to both sides while combining like terms, what you get is this bizarre equation, 12x equals 0, which a lot of people will say has no solution. Uh-uh. It totally has a solution. What number do you multiply 12 by to get 0? Two. 0. If you divide 12 on both sides, you get the same thing. It's x equals 0. And if x equals 0, then the rest of the problem is cartoonishly easy to solve because 3 times 0 equals y minus 2 from the original top equation. So 0 equals y minus 2. That means that y has to be 2. And if you spot check it in the bottom question, equation, it also works. 0 equals 4 minus 4, also true. Let's look at the next question. Solve each equation below for the given variable, if possible. Where are we time-wise? Doing pretty good. Less than two minutes. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to do the best we can here. Question A is going to require a, a thing called cross-multiplication to solve it. I'm just going to keep going and recording. You guys might uh, try not to make a super amount of noise. I'm just going to keep talking to myself when the bell rings, but I'm going to keep going as long as I can. 5 times x minus 2 will look like this when you're all done. And this is equal to 7 times 4x. We got to distribute on the left and get 5x minus 10 equals 28x. Subtracting the 5x from both sides will give us negative 10 equals 23x. And you know what? This is a bizarre equation with a bizarre answer, but that's what it is. x is equal to negative 10 over 23. I don't know what that is, but it's the answer. Question B. Again, we got some distributing to do here. We're going to do negative 3 times both 2b and 7 on the left. Negative 6b plus 21 equals, let's combine like terms, negative 6b plus 21. And you know what we can do is we can actually drop the pen and walk away. Because if you're looking at this equation and thinking about what's going on on both sides, you already know what's happening. It's the exact same equation. This is one of those classic infinite solution situations that pops up from time to time. 
These are actually the exact same equation. If you were to graph both of them, you would see one line. They're exactly the same. And 823, we're going to write one equation of a line, keyword line. That's going to be an mx plus b that passes through the two points down below. We've done this a billion times this year. So we're just going to do it one more time. First thing we've got to do is find the slope. The slope you can find by figuring out the change in y and the change in x. Don't let these big numbers fool you. They're just numbers that are big. 300 minus 200 will give you the difference in y. I'm going to keep going here. Negative 400 minus negative 800. Be very careful there on the bottom. That would be the difference in x. You would have 100 on top and 400 on bottom, which is a really nice 1 fourth for your slope after all is said and done. Now that we know the slope and two whole sets of points to work with, we can easily find the rest of the equation. You can use either one of these pairs of numbers for x and y. I'm going to use the one on the right because it's got, I guess, smaller numbers, but they're both about the same in difficulty, I think. So if we're going to write y equals mx plus b, we can replace the y with 300. We can replace the slope with 1 fourth, and we can replace the x with negative 400. And this is actually really nice for us because 1 fourth times 400, negative 400 becomes negative 4. Or, hang on, I'm not right about that. Negative 100. 400 divided by 4 is 100. And then all we got to do is add that 100 over. And we will get 400 for B. And now we're pretty much done because we know what M is, we know what B is, so we can write the equation. Y equals 1 fourth times X plus 400. And again, before we leave this problem, it's a really good idea to spot check that. 1 fourth of negative 800 would be negative 200. And negative 200 plus 400 is, in fact, 200. And in the other equation, 1 fourth of negative 400 is negative 100. And if you add 400 to that, you, of course, get 300 also. So you know that it works. Thanks for sticking around, Dax and Mr. Briggs. Yeah. It's been great making these videos for you guys. Hopefully you use them. Watch them with the sound on. I give you lots of helpful hints. Okay, see you later. Have a great time in geometry next year. I'm very proud of you.